first tip that I have to use heat safely is to use a really good shampoo and a really good conditioner. Before you apply any type of heat to your hair, you want to try to do it on clean hair. I know that there are instances where, you know, maybe our hair might've got a little bit frizzy and we're just gonna run the flat iron over one quick piece really fast, or we wanna throw some curls in our hair really quick. I'm not talking about that. those instances. I'm talking about if you're gonna be using heat on a regular basis, make sure you're using a good shampoo and a good conditioner that is going to clean your hair, that is going to moisturize your hair. And I would say even one that has a little bit of protein in it as well, just so that your hair is able to withstand the heat process that it's about to undergo. It's really important that your shampoo and conditioner has some sort of moisture in it because when you do heat style your hair or use heat on your hair, the moisture is actually leaving your hair and heat can actually dry your hair out if you don't uh, replenish your hair with moisture before and after you use it. And that's why I think setting yourself up with a really good shampoo and conditioner is a great step. I will go ahead and pop some of my favorite shampoos and conditioners on the screen. A lot of these shampoos and conditioners are some that you guys have recommended to me and I ended up falling in love with absolutely all of them. And all of the shampoos and conditioners that I use in my hair, like I said, do a really good job in making sure my hair is clean, adding that moisture to my hair so that my hair has a lot of slip in it. My hair is not dried out and stripped after I'm using the flat iron or the blow dryer. And my hair just feels really good and really soft going into the process. My hair is not stripped and therefore just really about to break when I use the heat tool, whatever heat tool that I'm gonna use. If your hair is dry and not nourished with protein and moisture before you use the heat tool, your hair is probably gonna snap. You're probably gonna notice a lot of breakage and that's because your hair doesn't have the elasticity that it needs to withstand the heat as well as your hair is also getting slightly drier as you are using heat. So you wanna make sure you put the moisture in before you even go in with whatever heat tool that you're gonna use. The second thing that I would say is going to help you to use heat safely and have a good experience whenever you do use heat and also minimize the breakage that you experience when you use heat is to use a leave-in and to also use either a heat protectant or some sort of blow dry spray. And again, this is for purposes of moisture. When we are using heat, like I just said, the moisture is leaving your hair. So adding that um, leave-in, adding that blow dry spray, not only is it acting as a barrier on your hair from being dried out so much, but it's putting that moisture back into your hair so that your hair does not feel so dried out as you are using whatever heat tool that you decide to use. And I really like leave-ins that are lightweight, that are moisturizing, that make my hair feel soft and manageable, but do not weigh my hair down. A lot of the leave-ins that I use are clear for some reason. I don't know if if that <laughs> if that coincides, but a lot of the clear uh, a lot of the leave-ins that I use are clear, and they are more of like sort of like a not really a jelly consistency, but like um like a liquidy gel type consistency is what I typically reach for when I go for a leave-in. You don't need that much. I would say a dime to a quarter size amount over your entire head is good enough. And a blow dry spray or a heat protectant is also good because it minimizes the amount of time that it takes to actually blow dry your hair. And it adds again, that barrier to your hair like the leave-in would. And it just leaves your hair feeling a lot softer and more manageable 
once you use that blow dry spray versus if you would not have used it. And if you would have just went in and just um, blow dried your hair or flat iron your hair without any sort of, you know, leave in or spray, your hair would feel a lot more dry. It would feel a lot less silky. And I know me personally, I have tested out both ways and I definitely noticed a difference. So grab you a heat protectant or a blow dry spray and a leave-in that you like, that does not leave your hair sticky, that adds that extra layer of protection, but also does not weigh your hair down. And I promise you'll notice the difference. The third tip that I have for you ladies, when you heat style your hair to provide a better heat experience and to also minimize breakage when you're using heat and styling with heat, is to use a finishing product. And your finishing product, you can use more than one finishing product or you can just use one. There are several different types. You have finishing oils, you have finishing hairsprays, and you have finishing serums. And the good thing about finishing products is that not only do they add shine and extra moisture back to your hair, but they help your hair feel soft as well. And they also aid in how your hairstyle looks in the end. It just makes your hair look more polished and put together and adds that little extra razzle dazzle, if you will, to whatever style that you are going to do. I always notice the difference when I do not use any sort of finishing product, my hair just looks a little bit more dull. And that's because like we said, when we use heat, no matter, we can't get around the fact that heat is drying to our hair, okay? We can't get around that. Heat is drying to our hair, but by adding in these products, you're putting that moisture back. And that's why the final step is that finishing product because after you have used your leave-in, after you use your blow dry spray, you blow dry your hair, you flat iron your hair, okay? You just use heat twice. So now it's time to add back some more moisture so that your hair doesn't look lifeless after you flat iron it. And that's why I would recommend using a finishing product like a serum, um, oil or a hairspray, like a, a, a light oil sheen. What I typically reach for is a serum. Um, I cannot think of the name of the serum, the cheese serum. That's the serum that I typically go for, or you can use a light hairspray to add some extra sheen. Um, those are the ones that I typically go for, and I will pop the ones that I use and that have been working well for me on the screen. The fourth tip that I have for you ladies in regards to using heat safely and to ensuring that your heat styles come out looking flawless is to check your tools, okay? This is very important because tools can actually be damaging our hair over time and we do not even know it. It's sneaking up on us. Our hair is breaking off from the bottom up, splitting up, and we don't even know what's going on. And I'm here to tell you, it's your tools, it's your tools. Check your tools, okay? There could be several different things going on with your tools. Let me break it down for you. So the first thing that could be going on with your tools, your tools might be dirty and need to be cleaned. If your tools are dirty and need to be clean, you could literally be frying your hair because you could have excess oils and um, buildup on your irons that could just be frying and sizzling every time you do your hair and you don't even realize it which is causing your hair to be drier, is causing your hair to look more dull, and we do not want that. We want silky, manageable, and moisturized hair even after we heat style. So make sure you check those tools. All it takes is a clean, damp cloth for you to just wipe them down. It takes less than a minute to do. Or you can even buy flat iron spray. They make flat iron spray and, um, you know, spray for you to wipe your tools down. But really, it doesn't take all that. You could just use a, um, a damp cloth and some warm water, and that will do the trick as well. You also want to look at your tools and observe your tools as you're using them. Notice how your hair feel. Notice how your hair feels while you're using the tools, how your hair feels after you use the tools, and notice if the tools are snagging or pulling your hair in any way, okay? If you, I used to have a flat iron, 
that the ends of it, like where the plates would meet, it will pull my hair and snag my hair. So you wanna make sure you're not using a flat iron that's doing that. And you also wanna check on your blow dryer as well. Make sure the blow dryer that you're using is gentle, that the teeth are not pulling and ripping out your hair, that there's no harsh metal pieces that have just wear down over time that are pulling at your hair. We definitely don't want that because that can cause a pattern of breakage over time that we do not want or need for our hair. I hope you ladies enjoyed these tips. If you are a heat stylist such as me and you use heat every single week, then I definitely think these tips will be beneficial for you because they have worked wonders for me. I hope you all have enjoyed this video and I will see y'all in the next one.